In this lecture series from the GRIDS course on ExcelVBASFun.com, we have the Excel worksheet that you're actually going to learn how to scoop up and shove into a grid. Now, later on in the series, we're going to show you how you can actually update this and edit this using the grid for it to retrieve data and send data. But in this one, let me show you what we're going to do. We're going to take information from the sheet I just showed you, and we're going to learn how to load that data into this so that you can then move the columns around, you can sort it, and then later you'll be able to click and have different edit types, including date dropdowns, be able to format these however you want. If you want to go ahead and download this workbook really quick before we get started, click the link above your screen. Otherwise, let's dive into the lecture. Now we're going to start using the employee bonus sheet as we're getting into some more fun advanced features with the X grid. So instead of using sheet number one, we're going to start using sheet two since that's the sheet code name for the employee bonus sheet. All right, because we're going to be uh, grabbing information from there. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the employee bonus worksheet here. And uh, by the way, I've added in some fun animations that you may have just noticed that they replay if you leave the sheet. And so if you uh, click away and then re-enter the sheet, it does this kind of intro thing and then it floats onto a regular uh, animation. If you're interested, anybody interested in how I made this, I'll add a bonus lecture showing the process of how I made that. Anyway, I just thought it was kind of cool. All right, so in this lecture, we're going to learn a couple different things. We're going to learn how to clear all of the columns because we're going to need that from time to time. When you clear all the columns, it actually clears all of the entries in each of the rows as well. So it's a nice, nifty, clean little trick. First of all, so let's hit Alt F11. So from here on out, we're going to start using something called Sheet 2. That's the code name for this one, right? So let's do another sub. This one we're going to call Clear All columns right and you can refer to this one later if you want to uh, so we're just gonna get this one ready we can use it later so sheet 2 now has a grid one and I've already added that grid for your convenience because I know you already know how to make one sheet 2 dot grid one dot columns dot instead of add this time dot clear that's gonna clear all of the entries in that particular grid all right, so we'll come back to that later whenever we have some data that we actually need to clear. All right, so let's go ahead and create a macro called, we're going to get the rows from Excel. So that's what we're working on right now. We're going to get the rows from the Excel sheet called sample data. So if you want to take a second to click over there and look at the sample data sheet. All right, so here's the sample data sheet. I'm going to zoom in using control and scroll wheel. So you can see we have a first name, a last name, a bonus, and a bonus date field. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to the employee bonus sheet and start coding some of this stuff so we can visually see as it happens. So Alt F11. So what do we need whenever we're going to iterate through Excel information? If you already have my Ultimate Excel VBA course then you know that we typically would need to get the last row we can do that before or after we add the columns in so let's go ahead and add the columns really quick so add the columns I'm just putting a note here so we're going to use a with and with statement to make it easier to do that shorthand that we talked about so with sheet 2 dot grid 1 dot columns and hit enter and just do your end with so now I'm going to hit up and just hit the tab key. So all I have to do is a dot, and it knows I'm doing columns dot add. So space bar, the f we're going to add one called first name uh, dot a space bar last dot a space bar uh, bonus. But I need to put that in quotes. And then dot a space bar bonus date. All right. Great. So we've added all four of the columns. Let's eliminate all the extra enter keys here. So we've added the columns. Now let's get the last row. Again, if you have my Ultimate Excel VBA course, you know how to do this, but we're going to go through this really quick. Now, the code name for the data sheet, which is over here, that had all the actual data that we're going to load into this grid, is called Sheet 3. That's the code name. So we're going to use Sheet 3 unless you click here and rename the sheet name which is fine if you do but so sheet 3 dot cells so we're going to use the cells object to get the row comma and then the column that we need so we're going to use the 
rows.count. We explain that more in my other course, but the rows.count gets the very bottom most row in that other sheet, and then comma one. Then we're going to do dot end using XL up. And what that does is it uh, goes to the other sheet and hits control up. So if you go here, you go to the very bottom cell in column one or column A. If you hit control up, it's going to zoom to the exact perfect row that we need to get the last row. But, but it actually just zooms to the cell. It doesn't give you the row. We have to extract the row from that cell, cell A4, that we just landed on. When we did the control up key, like using end XL up, that was a control up motion from the bottom most cell on that sheet. And then all we have to do is get the dot row. That would take, instead of the word Cindy, which is the value of cell A4 that we landed on, if we just wanted the dot row, we would say dot row, and then the row for this particular cell is just the number 4. That's what we're trapping in this variable, is the number 4. Let's go back to the employee bonus so we can watch the magic happen. Alt F11. So let's actually step through what we have so far. If I hit F8, I'm going to step through. So we're going to do this macro. We're going to do sheet two dot grid one dot columns dot add first dot add column name last, and then we're add one called bonus and add one called bonus date. All right, now the next line of code, we're going to get the last row of the other sheet of sheet three using the very last row on column A, and then doing control up, and then getting the row from that resultant cell. It's a lot of steps, but Excel knows how to do it all. If, if we hit F8, it gives us the last row is 4 on that other sheet, which is correct. So now that we know what the last row is, we can use a simple loop to loop from row number 2 on that sheet all the way to the very last one, which happens to be 4. So let's create a simple loop here. I'm going to say for X, and X is going to represent each row inside of Excel. So for X is going to be 2 all the way to the last row. And then at the end of this loop, we'll say next X. Now this isn't all we have to do. We're actually going to utilize the grid as well. But let's just start simple. So first of all, we're going from row 2 to the last row of 4. And that would actually loop through every single row. Now, each time it gets done with all the commands in here, it goes to the next row or the next number in our loop. All right, now that we know that's going on, we need to implement the grid now. So let's do a within statement. So with sheet two dot grid one dot items. You remember items means the rows. So I'm going to hit tab. So I'm going to type. So I'm going to type end with at the bottom, and then I'm going to go ahead and indent this stuff using the tab key. So that now we're doing a with end with statement with the grid items on that sheet. And then every time this loop runs, we're going to add another item. So just as we did before, we're going to say h is going to be equal to the sheet 2.grid1.items dot add item method. Now what item are we going to add? If I hit open parentheses, am I going to just simply use the word Dan or something like this? No, we're going to take something from sheet three, the sample data. So we're going to say sheet three dot, let's use the cells object now that we already have a row number. For example, we have row number two and then three. It's always going to be the variable X though. So that's our row. It's going to be our ever-changing row number. And then row X, comma, how about we're going to use column A? You could put it in quotes, or you could use the number 1 to represent column A or column 1 from that sheet. Oh, uh, do your closed parentheses, and let's say dot value, the value of that cell. And then you can put your ending parentheses for the add item method. And what that'll do is that'll add whatever is on row X on the very first column, column A, for that sheet. It's going to add that, and it's going to give me the identifier, the H item, for the new row, the new item we just created. And with that powerful information, we can continue adding the cell values for the next few rows that we need. So we've trapped this one uh, in there. And now we just need to get this one, this one, and this one for that row before we move on to the next X, which will be three in a minute. Okay, so let's go back here and watch as it works. 
The next thing that we would do after we have got the very first one, the word Daniel or whatever it is, then we're going to use the member sheet two dot grid one dot items dot cell value, just like we did in the other lecture. So f cell value, remember what the row or the item identifier is? That's right, we just trapped it into a variable called h. So we have h, comma, and what's the column index for the next thing that we're gonna do? Well, we already did column zero, so how about we do column number one? And so that row, but column one, is gonna need to be equal to uh, and once again, we're going to take something from sheet three dot cells, blah, blah, blah. So we're going to say sheet three dot cells, row X, same row on the other sheet. However, the column that we're going to get the last name on there is actually the column number two, or in quotes, you could say column B. All right. So that dot value. And then actually, we don't need that end parentheses, right? From here on out, we can honestly just copy and paste and increase these numbers, okay? So let's go ahead and step through the code. And by the way, let me just show you something that's going to go terribly wrong because we never told it to clear out the columns each time. So assuming that this code was in every time you ran the same macro, it's actually going to add all these columns each time unless we tell it to clear. So let me show you what that might look like if we forgot to clear them. Now we have first, last, bonus, and bonus date. We have these columns added again. Oh, no. So what we have to do is before the macro runs, we need to remove all columns. And we can do that with this one line of code right here, or we can actually just call forth that other macro that already has it written out. So we could just say clear all call, and I'm going to hit control spacebar to auto complete the name of this macro because it's going to know what I want. Control spacebar. There we are. Clear all columns. I want you to run that macro called clear all columns. And then after that line, then you add the things. All right, so let's move the little yellow arrow right there. I'm going to hit F8. So clear all columns. It's going to run that macro. Then it's going to come back to this macro. And now we'll add first, last, bonus, and bonus date. And then we're going to get the last row. We're going to initiate this with end with statement for the items. And we're going to initiate this loop from row 2 all the way to whatever the last row is. In this case, 4 on that sheet. So X is firstly going to be 2, row 2. So we're going to add the item from that particular row on that sheet 3. And the value is going to be what's in the column number 0. And that will give us the row for this grid, which is 4, 7, 6, 5, 8, whatever. All right. So now that we have that number, we can use the cell value of that item number and column 1. Remember, 0, 1 is the last name field. And so that's going to come from column 2, the last uh, the last this is column two right here all right so let's all hit all f11 and move on to this line here if i hit f8 now we're affecting the cell value of this new column number one the last name field all right great it's coming from the sheet just fine so we're going to copy and paste this and we're going to allow that to occur a couple more times so paste paste and now we can just change this. So the next line that we want to happen is going to be column 2. Remember, 0, 1, 2. That will be the bonus. And then on the other sheet, it's actually one more than that, 3. And then this one will increment to the number 3. And this one will increment to the number 4. And it should work out. All right. So if I do this, this thing is coming from the sheet of that column number. So F8. And then finally, the last one is F8. And it just it takes the date and takes the value just fine inside those fields. Now we're ready for the next X. We're, we're moving on to the next row, the row of 3 now. So X is 3, and we're going to add a new item, a completely different item ID. So that means that it's going to be fine when it adds these new items from the other sheet. So Bob Baker, 97.5 is his bonus on that date. And uh, Cindy, and then that's it for the loop. So just like that, we have successfully added all these items from the other sheet. I'm going to go ahead and have this auto fit these columns for us. So I'm going to show you one more line of code before we move on to the next lecture. So I want to, after this all runs, I want to make sure that the grid one on that sheet, so sheet2.grid1 
dot column auto resize there it is column auto resize equals true so by default it is false for this grid so if I rerun this macro I'm just gonna run it at full speed that it nicely auto fits these for us uh, very evenly now later on we'll learn that we can actually set the width for each of these columns if we want to but for right now auto resize is just fine we'll see you in the next lecture